Winter Dragons, a Lake Scatterwood Tales short story for middle grade readers by Jay Wilburn. If you like what you read, check out the Lake Scatterwood Tales books. There are two chapter book stories in each book. Crazy things are always happening at Lake Scatterwood. All right. Growing the glowing eggs gave off steam where they had settled in the snow. There was a wide brown patch of ground where the eggs had melted the snow around them. Now they twitched, they hopped a little, then they started to crack even though it was was the middle of winter. So I'm going to change A to the. It's these sort of amazing edits that make me a million dollars. All right. First, one small dragon emerged, breaking the shell uh, of its egg apart as it crawled free. The other dragon had to use its teeth to break its shell open wider before he could escape, so it took the second dragon a little bit longer. The first dragon, Hatchling, spotted something sparkly at the edge of the snow. It ran forward to investigate and found the two name tags. This was a big decision, so he considered each name carefully as his brother still struggled with his egg. The first dragon chose the name Cory and slipped the chain of the golden tag over his head um, and around his neck. Finally, his brother fought his way free. That was harder than I expected. It's cold out here. What's going on? It must still be winter, Corey said. That happens sometimes. The other dragon stretched and shook. We were born in winter? That's terrible. We'll figure it out, Corey said. Get your name tag on and let's look for someplace warm and something to eat. All right, I'm going to put the apostrophe there. People like it when you use apostrophes in the correct place. That's a pro tip for anybody who needs it. Name tags. The second dragon moved forward, but only found one option. Dabble, I don't like that name. Switch with me. What? I'm already wearing mine. I'm Cory. It's too late. Put it on. We can just switch, though, the second dragon said. I think I'm more of a Cory than a Dabble. Just switch? That's crazy. I'm already Cory. We can't have two Corys. Put your name tag on and let's go. The second dragon ducked its head into the remaining tag. He had to stick his nose in the snow to get it. Dabble didn't like that. Corey said, I see some buildings down that way, Dabble. Let's go see if we can find some food. Buildings mean people, Dabble said. We're supposed to stay away from people. Corey scratched at the scales under his chin and said, We'll be careful. Let's go. We can't stay out in the cold like this. Why are we here alone? Dabble asked. Where's our mother? Dragon mothers leave and we have to survive on our own, Corey said. How do you know that? We were just born. Corey tilted his head at his brother and blinked a couple times. Some animals are just born already knowing things, like we can read our, our name tags and we know we are dragons. Well, of course we know we're dragons, Dabble said. What else would we be? Are you sure you don't want to switch names? It's done, Dabble. Get over it already. I also know it is cold out here, so let's go. They moved down the hill together, leaving sets of tracks behind them in the snow. Their long, spiky tails uh, dragged curvy lines in the snow between the marks for their claws. All right, that's a good detail, I think. Stepping out of the woods, the snow was deeper and a frozen lake stretched out below them. Several buildings with snow on their roofs stood dark and quiet out in the open. I don't see any people, Corey said. Dabble shook his head. They could still be here, maybe sleeping. It's daytime, Corey said, and I don't hear any people either. They could be hiding. People are tricky like that. I don't smell them either, so if they, if there were people here, they've been gone a long time. I don't like this, Dabble said. I don't like any of it. Corey rolled his eyes, but then tracked out into the snow. Dabble followed. The door to the largest building was locked. Corey said, I'm going to use fire on it. Don't do that. Why not? You'll burn the whole place down. Right. Good thinking. Okay. I'll see what I can do with my claws. Um... Corey flapped his wings, let's say his new wings, wings up to the lock. 
He was about to give up, but then the door popped open. The dragons went inside. It was almost as cold in there as it was outside. There were several tables with chairs stacked on top, but nothing moving. It smells like human in here, Dabble said. Smells like young humans. Those are the worst kind. Uh, Corey said, it's an old smell. They probably left before it snowed. There's a fireplace over there and wood beside it. Let's start a fire. Someone might see the smoke. Well, I'm not going to freeze to death because I'm afraid of smoke. They stacked the wood inside and started a big fire easily with their burning breath. Let's find some food, Corey said. Dabble sniffed around. I don't smell any of that. Well, we should try anyway. They found a kitchen. The fridge and freezers were propped open and unplugged. They were empty, but the room was already almost cold enough that a fridge wasn't needed. The fire was warming the big room slowly. Then the young dragon brothers opened a pantry. It was almost empty too, but there were cans of beans. They tried... Let me put the they instead of the. Very common typo. They tried to claw them open, then tried to bite the tops off the cans. They dented the cans, but couldn't open them. What do we do? Corey asked. Dabble said, I don't get it. Humans have no claws, and their teeth aren't nearly as sharp as ours. They aren't very strong, especially the young ones that stunk up this place. How are they opening these cans? That's brilliant, Corey said. They must have some kind of tool. The dragons searched the drawers and tried all the knives, forks, spoons, and whisks, but nothing opened the cans. They found the can opener, but it took them several tries to figure out how it worked. They got the beans open, cooked them with their breath, and ate all the beans in front of the warm fire. Dabble said, this is Camp, this is camp Lake Scatterwood. It is a summer camp for human children. They have been doing summer camps since here since the 1920s. How do you know that, Corey asked. Dragons are born knowing things, Dabble said. Really? No, I read it off this plaque on the wall. So the humans are only here during the summer. Maybe we're safe then. My stomach doesn't feel so good, Corey said. Mine either. Those beans were heavy. Corey suddenly farted out a huge fireball. The dragon brothers laughed. Then Dabble farted a stream of fire into the air, too. They had a contest to see who could fart the biggest fireballs. They were careful to aim into the fireplace so that they wouldn't damage the Lake Scatterwood dining hall. No wonder human children stink, Dabble said. They eat nothing but beans all summer. The dragons decided to search the rest of the building. In a storage room between the kitchen, behind the kitchen, they found all sorts of toys and books. There were sets for plays and all kinds of costumes. They moved on to the next room and found a camp store. Shirts and other clothing, uh, as it were were boxed up. Yeah, I think it's were. Instead of was. Corey opened a few of the boxes and then said, hey, look at this. The dragons inspected all the brightly colored wrappers. Dabble said, candy. We should have searched here first. The dragons ate a ton of candy and their stomachs hurt worse, but they were full. They found a slushy machine and used the snow outside with the syrup to make themselves some more treats. That really hit the spot, Dabble said. They moved back to the fire to warm up and used the sets and costumes to make themselves a little bedroom near the fireplace. They made up plays for each other. They ate more candy. They played old board games. They played ball. And they found some hot chocolate that was easy to make. There were no marshmallows, though. Let's say... And the kids must have... All right, I'm going to have this be with something they say. Corey said, the kids must have eaten all the marshmallows during the summer when they got tired of all those beans. Okay, there we go. They decided to have one more fireball farting contest before bed. As they settled into their new bedroom for the night, Dabble said, we should search the rest of the camp tomorrow. Winter might last a long time. We should be okay, though. Today was a great birthday. I'm glad we were born in the winter, Dabble said. Corey agreed, and the winter dragon slept soundly in front of a fire that night. Let's say... It sure was confusing 
when the camp counselors returned and tried to figure out why all that stuff was gathered in the dining hall that smelled like burned farts. There we go.